That potty mix is trash, bro. Why are you using that, man? Stop using that potty mix. That medium is trash. Stop it, bro. Just please stop it. Bruh. What's good, people? How is it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash a like. Hit the bell. Those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway, guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's almost 420. And you know when 420 comes around, we got to bring you guys that goodness, man. So tomorrow we're going to be doing a live stream giveaway. And you guys, don't miss that man it's gonna be epic packed with stuff and it's gonna be a banging banging live man so definitely tune in for that let me know what you guys are doing for 420 everyone's doing something different everyone's chilling out somewhere different it's gonna be friggin' awesome man but today's episode is gonna be about expensive versus cheap potting mix man which one should you get there are a lot of different options some of those potting mixes can cost a buck man it can cost quite a few bucks so you want to watch out for that but you want to figure out what do i need from that potting mix that i can't get in the other potting mix what makes this one so special man well think of it this way Polymix is the first building box for a great garden, and your seedlings will depend on a good quality polymix to support their growth and to get through that seedling and veg stage, even to get into the flowering stage, man. So choosing the right type of polymix comes down to different things like ingredients, quality, but it also comes down to price, right? Because a lot of people need to factor that in. How expensive is it? Do I need to buy a lot of it? If I need to buy a lot of it, that price can like rack up, man. So there are a lot of endless variables for polymixes and other soil variables at any garden store, and you need to figure out like what's good and what's not good. But that's said a lot of people don't even know there's a difference between potting mix and potting soil right there are different types of soils and mixes that you can get from the garden store not everything is potting mix some things might just be garden soil you know and that's completely different now potting mix and potting soil are two phrases that you may see a lot you may want to consider what the difference is well usually they are the same thing but sometimes potting soil is just soil and it's not an actual mix like the potting mix with the necessary nutrients for your plants another planting mix that you may come across is like seed starting mix right seed starting mix is a great one it also has low nutrients in it because seedlings don't need tons of nutrients and a lot of times it may also have some mycorrhiza built in there which is great for seed starting and great for getting those roots popping when you now start off your grow now the seed mixes are usually a lot more sterilized and usually super fine as a substrate because they're really easy just for those seeds to get through the seed, seed mixes are a great option if you're starting to sprout seeds but the regular potting mix which i'm a huge fan of is incredibly versatile and can be used at various stages of the planting process you can use it to plant seeds you can use it to prune b bigger plants you can use it to flower you can use it for pretty much everything man and the great thing is that a lot of times you can reuse your soil some people don't do it it may be controversial but it is something that you can do once you get the right processes in there so you can get the best out of it but like i was saying when it comes to potting mix there's expensive ones and there's cheaper ones so what's the difference between them well straight off the bat more expensive potting mixes like soham living soil builder soil they actually got a lot of different ingredients mixed in there sometimes they may have perlite vermiculite other materials that actually help with air aeration and just getting that breathability in there and when you get that and when you've got that good medium your plants a lot like when you got that good medium your plants are likely to grow a lot better a lot quicker and a lot stronger it'll save you a lot of time and effort having to add additional fertilizers organic inputs and all sorts of stuff so it's a great way that you guys can get everything all in one just think of it that way now every now anyone who's grown a plant knows how painful it is if you lose a plant man losing a plant is not fun it's never nice and a lot of times plant loss can be directly related to your grow medium man like your grow medium can be a haven for bugs it can be a haven for pathogens and pests and stuff like that but once you have that dialed in it's a lot less likely that that will wipe out your crop so always never never scrimp on the potting mix man always never just never do it but of course the advantages and disadvantages to both and the most obvious probably most significant advantage of some of those cheaper potting mixes is actually its price point right so you can get some cheaper soil some cheaper potting mix and it's really cost effective and makes gardening accessible to a lot more people right so a lot of people don't have to have a huge amount of money to get into gardening but there is often a difference between quality when you hit that price point difference man now don't get me wrong there are some tried and true potting mix options on the lower price point side of things the best option is probably to buy a range of potting mixes and test them yourself and see which one is worth it at that price point now usually the lower quality potting mixes come without any pre-mixed fertilizers and that allows you to use the fertilizers you like best rather than relying on what actually comes in the bag if you have access to some free fertilizers like maybe coffee grounds compost wood ash or any of those stuff you can get that from like a fireplace even then you can make your own simple fertilizers for less but putting things that will otherwise go to waste you can now use it as a fertilizer think of that 
that. Perfect. Of course, there are disadvantages to the cheaper stuff as well, man. It's not all sunshines and rainbows. Low cost potting mix is often made from components like uncomposted wood shavings, sawdust, sand, and these are just lower quality materials that are not optimal for your plant's growth. A lot of times, if you dig into some of those bags or some of that low quality mix, you'll see some big wood chunks, you'll see some big twigs, you'll see some stuff that looks like it's just not fully broken down. It really shouldn't be in there. And a lot of times, lower quality potting mix has very little texture and structure and oftentimes it'll slump in the pot after just a couple months. It won't provide your plants with as many nutrients and it'll also have a lower pH level which will make it completely unsuitable for some types of plants. So you really need to check your pH especially with those cheaper potting mixes because you just don't know what that pH may be. Now, probably one of the biggest long term impacts and the biggest drawbacks of some of that poor quality potting mix is that it's badly aerated man. Sometimes you may have some stuff that's got no perlite in there, it's just like some native soil that looks like really heavy and your roots have a real issue trying to make their way through that man you want to make sure that they're not starved of oxygen you want to make sure that they can get through and they can get air and water out of that medium man that's super super important guys now considering more cost effective potty mix is not a bad thing man because when you're shopping for a potty mix you'll often notice that they can be a huge discrepancy between the prices from about two dollars up to over like fifty dollars like there's a huge difference when it comes to some of those premium potty mixes man now potty mixes can be specialized so that you see different varieties for indoor and outdoor growing you might have ones for different types of plants different stages of growth and this may confuse a new grower but when you're looking around just look for a potting mix that's good quality and good value all the bells and whistles most of the times you don't need it and that'll do a grower no good the main thing to look for is good quality ingredients with very little filler you don't want a lot of filler in there because that means it's just filled with a lot of crap fertilizer within the potting mix is not always essential either but it does remove a step for growers and home gardeners who have one less thing to buy potentially so that's definitely something to consider man now there definitely are a lot of benefits when it comes to getting some of those more expensive bags of soil and potting mix simply because those things may help your plants grow a little bit better it doesn't mean that you always need to get it but sometimes it can and as i mentioned expensive potting mixes can contain greater qualities of perlite vermiculite and other nutrients and materials that help your plants grow so for instance some of that fox farm ocean forest that's actually got some of that those aged forest products like sphagnum peat moss earthworm castings bat guano fish emulsion crab meal it's got a whole lot of different stuff in there that really help your plants grow and give your plants a real nice texture a lot of people have had instances where they got bags of soil that had bugs in them so you want to make sure that where you're getting that soil from they store it in the proper place and where you, when you get it you're not getting a bag full of bugs man because if you get those bugs into your grow room it's always a lot harder to get them out than they come in if anyone knows, you know, trust me, it ain't fun. Right. Now, sometimes you guys got to keep in mind that potting mixes like Fox Farm Ocean Forest, those nutrients can run a little bit hot because they're already built into the soil. So a lot of times some growers don't start seeds off in it, but the built-in fertilizers don't last forever either. So they may last for a couple of weeks, you know, maybe about a month. But then after that, you may need to start to feed. So think of that as well. It may give you, it may save you a little bit in terms of that feeding cost up front. But as you go further, further on into veg and flower, you may need to add some nutrients to top dress, liquid fertilizer, whatever the case may be. And some of these higher quality potting mixes retain water a lot better and that brings down the time and the cost of watering your plants. Now all these factors mean this is definitely a correlation between good quality potting mix and making sure your plants get the best that they can be. And everyone wants to make sure the plants are the best that they can be man. So let me know what you guys think when it comes to some of these potting mixes because a lot of times you can even mix them up. I have had instances where I mix them up. You can make your own potting mix, you can get 50% coca cola or peat moss you can add in some topsoil you can add in some compost you can add in some perlite or pumice and then you can also add in some new, nice homemade organic fertilizers like a alfalfa or a canola meal that gives you not good nitrogen rock dust that gives you added minerals gypsum you can get some calcium from gypsum rock phosphate for organic phosphorus epsom salt for magnesium lime or sulfur for ph control so there's a lot of different things that you guys can add and if you guys want a really good quality potty mix and you don't want to pay the high prices that you see in those gardening stores then a great alternative is definitely to make your own potting mix man the components on their own are relatively cheap and they make up a high quality potting mix when you put them together a lot of people make their own super soils and that should be banging Perfect. so definitely check that out man definitely let me know if you guys have made any of your own potting mixes and if you have what were the ingredients man do you go for the expensive stuff do you go for the cheaper stuff where do you get your ingredients do you get it down at the local shop do you get it from a forest do you get it in a backyard full of compost like let me know what you guys think man and like i said the quality of your potting mix can have a significant 
significant impact on the health of your plant as it grows. And don't get me wrong, it is possible to grow great plants with low quality potting mix, but you'll just need to work a little bit harder and add those additional ingredients. A good quality potting mix, by contrast, requires far less effort on the part of the grower, and a better quality potting mix just promotes better air, water retention, and a whole nutrient-rich and stable environment for those roots to grow. Now, depending on your budget, it may be best to try various potting mix options and find your preference, but it may also be beneficial to match your potting mix to the type of plant you want to grow because different plants require different nutrients, man. So always keep that in mind. You can always mix something up and make it out to your own specifications and your plant will love it. This video is brought to you by Mars Hydro, where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels. Whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation, they have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new two-in-one tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full-spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro Grow Lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANN THC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANNTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. So let me know what you guys think, man. Smash the like button for that. Happy 420 to everyone that's tuned in. Don't forget to tune into tomorrow's live stream. We're going to have a banging one with loads of giveaways, and it's going to be crazy, man. So smash the like for that. Hit the bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one. But most importantly, stay high and stay fly, and check out this video right here and this video right here. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace, fam.